Um, you might notice that some of you have watercolor pencils, some of you have regular pencils. Originally, the plan was to have a whole bunch of regular pencils and a few sets of watercolor pencils because so because we're combining the two, we're not actually using the watercolor pencils with water. They're um, it's more like the the two kinds of pencils have different properties in that the colored pencils are much weaker than the watercolor pencils and you can sort of like draw only so many layers with them before you can't really make a distinctive mark over top and with the watercolor pencils you can just easily draw over top of them. so i guess since we have kind of watercolor and non-watercolor pencils. Um, I'd like to note that for those of you who have the watercolor pencils, use them much more lightly on the paper. Um, and for those of you who have the regular pencils, um, maybe borrow some of the watercolor pencils if you're not able to make a mark. Also, so uh, the reason you have both watercolor paper and regular paper is because at first I'm going to explain a bunch of concepts about how to draw. And it's good to practice that on just regular paper because watercolor paper is kind of expensive. Um, also, just a note, do not like start touching your watercolor paper. It will absorb your oils and it will not work as well for you. Um, uh, the other note about watercolor paper is do not press really hard with your pencil on it because the reason it's so nice to draw on watercolor paper is because it has a really nice texture to it and you want that texture to shine through it really gives a more artistic feel to your final work um so for the original uh sketches on the regular paper just do whatever you want um and don't feel pressured for the watercolor paper be a lot more careful um so originally each of you have one sheet um if you need you can take another sheet but that's why each of you have just one sheet of watercolor paper um Yellow, do you want to show which is which oh yeah so um these ones are the watercolor pencils and these ones are the regular pencils and there are also some erasers and some pencil sharpeners um so I guess the uh, and another note. Um, so first first note is um, when you draw uh, something to try to practice right from the start is try not to draw a line like this or like this. Try to be more confident and draw like uh, a line right away. This is like the first thing that it's good to know for beginners and. Since we have uh, colored pencils, it's especially easy to do this because you can just use a really light colored pencil, like yellow is like the marking color because you can easily draw over top of it. So it's really easy to just draw one. You can even draw it like this. You can draw one like this if you want. And then afterwards, cover off it up with a nice confidence line. Um, so then, um, what that is. Um, so the generic concept is, if you're drawing anything, you're going to define that object with two things. You're going to define it with the overall um, shape, but also you're going to sort of imply the shape using shadows. So for example, uh, if, if you're drawing a nose, so often people will draw a nose like this, and a better way to draw a nose is to just like imply the shape using say a shadow like this under the nose and maybe you can do a little bit of a shadow here and like a little bit here and there's like i'll show you this soon in the context of a face but you can just kind of imply it with the shadows and it looks much more realistic and basically the shadows are the main thing you're going to use to define where a shape is the next thing to know is you can draw absolutely anything using two things so first of all you're going to break it down into the simplest shapes you can and second is you're going to try really hard to figure out what the relationship is between different points on an object so say i was drawing something like an owl so I would start out with something like 
Okay, well, the head is a circle. And then the body overall is a circle. And maybe the chest pops out. So it's another circle. And then the wings are two more circles. And then you have triangles here and triangle here. And past that point, you can start filling this in. So this gives me a lot of information. This gives me information that I have shadows here. I have shadows under the head next to the wings. Um, it basically allows me to figure out how to convey the overall shape. And once you have that down, then you can start actually showing the details. So this is really important for the face, which we're getting to now. So I just wanted to introduce those two concepts. So now let's get into how you would draw a face. Um, let me grab it. Let me grab the light. Um, so on one of your just uh, practice sheets of paper, I guess I follow along. Um, and at any point, if anyone has a question, you can raise your hand and ask me. Um, so, so. So, and let me do if I'm going too fast, just yell it out. represents your cranium, right? And then you have an overall oval underneath, and this represents the jaw. So that's your overall head shape. And by the way, this is the first thing I'm showing, these proportions of the face. They're just very generic kind of standard average proportions. If you're drawing a specific person or something, then you have to measure out how you're going to do that. And I'll show that later. I'm just first starting out with showing just completely average. This is what they teach when they first start drawing. Pieces. So then you draw a line halfway, like exactly halfway, I guess that wasn't very accurate. It's a little bit harder to draw on a big thing because I can't figure it out well. But there you go. So let's say this is roughly half. And then you make a mark halfway down. And then you draw a mark halfway down here. Halfway between the nose and the chin. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I didn't explain that. So, this halfway line is where your eyes are. Um, this line is the nose line. And then this is going to be the mouth line, like between the two lips. Can you again say which is like what half? Wait, so, one I'm and right now, I'll write it. <laughs> eyes. The top and the very bottom. Yeah, I guess this should be bigger. But yeah, halfway nose. Half. So that's the very first thing. Um, and then. <laughs> Where the lines go? So where the lines go? Yeah, so okay, halfway through. Halfway in the halfway between top and bottom, you have your eyes. Okay. Halfway between your eyes and the bottom of your head is your nose. 
Yeah. And then halfway between the bottom of your nose and the bottom of your face is the line like between your two lips. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next, just um, roughly, we draw an eyebrow line. It's just a little bit over the eyes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm not being loud enough, by the way. I'm trying to project. Um, okay. okay, so the next line we draw is so from, from your eyebrows to your nose, that is where the ears are. And this is if the face is straight on. So if if the head is tilted this way, the ears would be lower. If you're tilted this way, the ears would be higher. But if you're dead straight on, then the ears are from where your eyebrows are to where your nose is. Okay, next step. So on average. <laughs> so it's next to the nose. Like the ears are next to the nose. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't figure out who was talking. Okay, I guess anyone, it, it, because this is such a big room, if you're talking, just like raise your hand. You don't have to wait for me to say you can talk. You can just talk at me, but just raise your hand so I know where you are. <laughs> um, okay, so this is where our ears are going to be. Next. We are figuring out where the eyes are. So on average, you have um, three eye widths. So an eye width, an eye width, an eye width, and then half an eye width on either side. So you have like half, one, half. So this is where the eyes are going to be. This is, uh, so I'm not doing this very accurately. It's a little bit harder on a chalkboard. But this is supposed to be the same distance as one of these, and this is supposed to be half. So half, one, 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 half. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So next up. Um, so I guess I should have drawn this aisle. Okay. So next, in order to figure out where everything uh, ends in terms of uh, horizontally your nose and your mouth, um, you can draw a line from here down, down, and then this is where your nostrils end, and this is where your mouth ends. How are we drawing those lines? Um, some of them, however many you want. They're, uh, they're not vertical? They're... No, they're, they're this way. Um, and then we feel it seems reasonable? Or... Sorry. Any angle that seems reasonable? Or... Yeah, I mean, it also depends on like the person. This is just like on average. And I realize I drew this a little bit steep this way. So, but this is just to give you the basic concept, like these need to line up. Unless someone's smiling, then this can be further out, but this is just for like, like if you're um, doing a passport photo. <laughs> so um, the next step, um, the next step is let's um, figure out where the eyebrows are. So, okay, actually before that. So the nose, you can kind of see as like, a, like a structure like this. So if this is the nose, then the nose would be like this overall. This is the generic shape. And um, so another thing you can do in art to figure out the basic shapes, by the way, is you can kind of squint and see what the major shapes are in something. So like, say if you were looking at a tree, if you squinted at the tree, first thing you'd see is like a big sphere, for example, on a cylinder. And then maybe you'd see like masses of leaves. So like if I were drawing a tree, I'd see like a tree. And then if I squinted, maybe I'd see that there's like a big bunch of leaves here, a big bunch here, a big bunch here, a big bunch here. And then past that, I can start putting in the shadows and like put shadows in between. And that looks a lot more like a tree. So it's the same concept with anything else. So like with a nose, this is the overall shape. And then you break it down further from there. 
So here, going back to here, you have two lines going down here, and then a line here, and that's your overall nose structure, right? And then from these two middle lines, if you connect them together and then go like this, then that's where your eyebrows are going to start. So this is an important shape. And then, so you can figure out where the eyebrows are. So usually on average, and this varies a huge amount person to person, you will have something like, something like this. For the eyebrows. And this is important because this connects with the sides of the eyes. All good so far? I'm not going too fast. Okay. It's just roughly. Walk around. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. This all looks good. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. Next step is we're going to define some of the facial yeah. structures like face and like your forehead. So, yeah, this is like where the forehead is most protruded. And here you have cheekbones. And so this is where it's easy to distinguish between if you're drawing a male face or a female face. So for female faces, you will kind of pretty much leave it as this nice, like rounded out curve. For male faces, you add a little bit of a bump there. Um, so then, so now that we figured out the shape, oh, and hair, it just roughly around here and you can add if it's like fuzzy hair or something you can add a bit more but this is where the skull ends so that's important just to know and then you can adjust accordingly where the hair will end depending on how poofy it is okay so we've designed the structure of our face so now we can start to get towards um, making shadows and just refining it some more so first, let's let's refine it a bit more. So somewhere like close to the bottom of the mouth, you have the chin line. For the nose, your nostrils will be somewhere around here, and you can have like uh, here, like under the nose, you have this region. Under the eyes, you have a little bit of a line here. So I simplified it at first to this shape, but it's kind of further out. So there's a gradation here. Where it's and then here it goes in front of that's where they're not going to be. Can you wait just a second and then repeat everything? Sorry. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are drawing while you're yeah, talking. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Um, so, uh, starting from the nose or from? Yeah, 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 I didn't get it. Yeah. Okay, so at first I kind of said that the nose was just um, this simple shape, and that's where you start out. But really, you have a very important feature, which is the nose, uh, the sides of the nose actually blend here. Um, there's a very smooth gradient onto the cheek. So, and this is actually, this gradient starts where um, your eyes, um, uh, with this line under the eyes, that's where this gradation at, uh, begins. So really, you have this area like this, which is like your transition. Okay, so this is all important to understand in order to figure out where are the shadows coming from. So you have the structure 
And now the next question you ask is, where is the light coming from? And now it becomes really easy to figure out where the shadows are because you know exactly where. So let's say, for example, this is our light source. Um, and for those of you who are feeling more courageous, you can make a light source elsewhere and figure it out exactly the same way. So if the light source is coming from here, then uh, what are the deepest shadows? So maybe look at um, look at someone next to you and squint and see where the where the deepest shadows are. And they're all squinting. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses? Yes. Okay. Because this is really important. Okay, so eyes. Okay, so we have a shadow here. The shadows are Nice. Any, any other ideas? Where oh, where did you see shadows? Yeah. Nose? Yeah. Nose yeah. has That's a shadow. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So the side, right? It, it would be on the side, right? Forehead, yes. Here there's a shadow. Where else? One of the wings of the nose there, the, the right wing. Yeah. So yeah, the light source is from here. Now you know exactly where the shadow is. It ends here because that's where the slope is. Okay. Where else? The cheek. Yeah, the cheek. Where else? There is uh, the, the sides of the chin. Yeah. It's starting to get trickier. There's still some more. What are some other ones? I'll be impressed with whoever guesses. Hairline. Yeah. Someone said hairline. Uh, yeah, here. So see again, we use the the shape tells us where it is and actually goes a little bit in like this because um, so most people also have like the bone goes a little bit like this. It's the frontalis bone. Um, okay, we're next. Lips. Lips. Yes, that's the really hard one. So specifically the upper lip. This is really important. So the upper lip. So if you look at a face from the side. The upper lip goes down, this one goes out. So if you have a light source this way, you will see this lip. This will be in shadow. So yeah, the upper lip is in shadow. So yeah, those are those are the main shadows. But there's also a few deeper shadows. Anyone have guesses where these are? Okay. By deeper, you also mean light. Sorry? By deeper, you mean like like deeper or like darker. lighter? Um, darker shadows. I like darker shadows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, also, yeah. Um, but on the face, uh, any guesses for deeper shadows? Nostrils. Yeah, nostrils. Any other spots? They're within the shadows that we have. Just below the nose. Yes, yeah, we have that one, but. That's not the deepest shadow. Around the left eye. Eyes, yes. So the deepest shadows are actually here. Yeah, so now we have the basic structure of a face. Oh, I mean, this is the left part of the nose. Yeah. Uh, it's not really the shadow. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the most generic sort of face. And so the next thing before we get to um, practicing how to apply this to colors, because this is this is how you would do it with um, if you were just coloring in black and white. So now you have a full understanding of how to draw a face in black and white. Oh, actually, there's one more thing I forgot. So there's also a deeper shadow right under the top eyelid. So like where your eyelashes are, where your eyelashes are. And I guess I forgot to say, so um, the, the eyes are, so I'll draw this bigger. So, 
if this were an I, if this were an I, then the iris would be here, the pupil would be here, and then you'd have a shadow here, like a deep shadow that kind of gets lighter. And you have um, this line here. And then if you draw, so the lower eyelid has some depth to it. So this part is actually kind of light and you can add like a very slight shadow here, um, but that's like a finishing touch kind of thing. And then you have the um, eyelid over top. So that's how you draw an eye and usually you can add a little sparkle um, and that makes the eye look very lifelike. Everyone following along good? Okay. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about moving away from the face again, just a generic sort of art concept. So if you want to draw, if you want to draw a specific person, so um, you would, you would try to measure distances on their face because most people do not perfectly match this sort of average stereotypical sort of face. There will be some differences. Maybe some people have eyes that are wider than this way or narrower. Maybe they have more room on either side of their face. Maybe they have, um, I don't know, like a shorter nose or something. So the way you figure this out is one technique that people use, this is what I often use, is um, you can use your thumb as a measure. So say, say I had like a giraffe in front of me. This is the greatest hard work I've ever made. Um, so say I was drawing this giraffe and I was trying to replicate it. So here's my sheet of paper. I'm, I'm drawing this giraffe. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the distance. So I kind of step away from it and I look, okay. So the legs from this distance is like the size of my thumb. And then I can use that as a measuring stick. Okay, the front legs are the same length. Okay, the, this area is the same length again. And then, oh, the neck is like two of those. And that way I can be like, okay, there are two units here. One, one unit this way, and then one unit this way. And then I go across, so I'm like, okay, so roughly the, the stomach, so and where the neck ends and where the head ends is also like a unit this way. And I start to break it down. And you do the same process for like anything you draw, a face, whatever, um, you, the exact same concept applies where you use this measuring tool in order to make something look like a particular person or whatever it is you're trying to draw. So let's start to get into the colored pencils. So um, the important thing now is to use colors. And the first thing we're going to draw is the shadows. Uh, actually, so before I say that, so this first sort of sketch that I showed, you draw this in yellow. So you sketch this out with yellow pencil. Yeah. 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 He's just talking this. You can just do it. I'm kidding, actually, it looks like it. This is the only So I was trying to deconstruct. <laughs> Tell everyone this. Hi, everyone. So, um, since it doesn't make sense to redraw all of this unless you want to practice, um, just for now, keep what you sketched out and make the shadows and colors over top with the colors I'm sitting in. Final sketch this is going to be yellow. So, I'm just saying this is yellow. Okay, so now, um, now the shadows are going to be blue. So shadows are blue.
Because um, so if you were if you were drawing like a cartoon me face or something, then that uh, that just depends on the style. But also some of these lines you don't want in your final drawing, right? Like like these lines across, you don't want them. And yellow allows you to sketch something out without it. Oh, instead of blue, why not black? So um, the reason for this is because, so if you look at a face, then the first thing that you notice is, you know, the skin color, whatever it may be. But if you look at it from an artistic perspective and like how light reflects off the skin and everything, then actually you see all the colors of the rainbow. Um, so, and in certain shadows, uh, so the shadows are slightly tinted blue in, in this kind of light, for example. So the lighting affects this a lot, but in an average scenario, the shadows would be slightly blue tinted the lighter areas would be slightly red tinted. So overall, yes. An area bounded to the upper curves. An area bounded to the upper curves. Yeah. The hair. So this is um. This is just uh. Its highness is the next. No, no, that's upper curves. Oh, the upper hair. So this is just where the skull ends. Yeah. And then this is um, depending on how poofy the hair is. It it just depends on that. So that's the that's the next thing. So the shadows overall are blue, and then there's a rule about drawing faces that for some reason no one understands why this makes faces look more realistic. So um, so overall, uh, so we're talking about very subtle variations in tint. So the top part is slightly more yellow. The middle part, so like here, this region is slightly more red. No. And then the bottom region is slightly more blue. Why again, no one knows. <laughs> So the, um, the way you go about drawing with pencils is first of all, especially with the watercolor paper, you, you need to have like a very light touch. The idea is to draw extremely lightly so you barely make a mark on the paper and make layer upon layer without pressing down hard. The moment you press down on the paper hard, you're going to make an impression on it and it won't look good. But also it, it means that then you can't press harder to accent the things that you want to accent. All that making sense? Yeah. Okay, so. What time is it? What time, what time? I'm on the head. Yes. But we're not doing like the final product right now. Not yet. No, that's um that's for the watercolor paper is for that purpose. Right now I'm just kind of giving you the basics so that you can then make a nice final product. <laughs> So question for all of you guys, do you want like maybe five minutes to just like try to review this and if you want you can try to sketch it a second time, and maybe I can walk among you and just yes. see how you're doing. Perfect. <laughs> This is a little bit, this should be a little bit taller, but it looks good. I thought it was like making a little bit taller here. So it's a uh, huh? yeah. 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 yeah.
You don't want, unless you want to draw a very old person, you don't want to draw these. So, not these. And you add the hairline. It's a little bit more. Yeah. But this is a practice. I call it my legs. Yeah. 
and this needs I mean, to be yeah. oh. and I would fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so it's like the same because like if you're thinking like a shadow, it's not the same though. So it's not curvy for paper, but you put like orange paper on high school colors. No, she said like a So like one of you, like they always put like so like because because you can actually see it like this part is like a really nice shot and it's kind of grayish and then the eyes pop so it's like the blood is going on you can see it you can actually see it's like it's not really clear it's like green can you see this is like under your skin so you see it's like you're like looking at the color because you all follow directions really well. <laughs> it's true. It really is. <laughs> so thank you all. Um, so the, the biggest uh, oversights were, first of all, it's really important that the eyes are halfway through. That's the first thing. Second, it's really important that the nose is halfway through. And some people didn't have enough space for the chin. So I get, uh, again, the mouth is halfway through between the nose and the bottom of the face. And the last thing people missed was full eye, full eye, full eye, half an eye, half an eye. So those are, those are the overall comments. So next, I'd like to go over how to draw individual features of the face. Uh, everyone feeling confident with the stuff so far? You all did really good. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Um, just shout at me if you have a question and like wave your hands. Um, okay, so uh, let's go over the eye again slowly. <laughs> really? Can you see other boards? Can you lift this one up or down? Oh, yeah. And this other one? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, one second interlude while I watch this. <laughs> Okay. 
first of all, let's review how to draw the eyes. So it's really important. The first thing that you learn when you're first starting art is never start on like one detail and complete it and then do other stuff. You can like, you can start to do a little bit of details if you really want to, once you have like a very generic sketch down, but like overall it's better to like kind of work on everything the same pace because otherwise the stereotypical thing that happens is you go really detailed and you finish one portion of the face really, really well. And then the second half of the face looks like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Don't be that person. <laughs> um, okay, so so in general, like, uh, and it also just makes it easier to maintain symmetry if you're drawing things at the same time. So something with a face, since you're trying to make it symmetric, anything, so I'm going to just draw one eye, but try to draw it at the same time mirrored on the other eye. It will make it much easier for you to have the same quality in both eyes. Um, so overall shape of the eye, here you go. It's like an almond. I guess I'll, I'll press down a bit harder so people at the back can see what I'm drawing. So overall shape is an almond. Uh, this is going to be the right eye if you're looking at me. Uh, so I got confused with this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drawing one eye for now. But if she was where the other eye would be, be oh, here, right? So yeah. We would draw. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm going to be really lazy and draw one eye, and I'm going to make all of you draw two eyes in the time that it takes me to draw one eye. <laughs> So here we have the right eye and we have eyelids and eyelids uh, can be all sorts of shapes, but just generic eyelids here. Um, so then the iris is there. So it's not like in the center unless the person's going like really like <laughs> as you, it, like some part of it will be hidden. Um, and if you're looking down, then it would be like here, right? But the point is some part of the eye is, uh, uh, some part of the iris is always hidden. So then you have this bit. And then the pupil is kind of in the center and you can, you can uh, subtly show a little bit about a person's emotions based on how big the pupil is. So if they're really happy and excited, then their pupil will be a bit bigger. If they're sad, then their pupil will be smaller. If they don't like someone, their pupil will be smaller. If they're scared, their pupil will be big. So like, uh, that's a subtle thing you can show, um, which your viewer at a subconscious level will understand this, even if they don't understand it, like, deeply, deeply. So, yeah, then the deepest shadow will be here and here, just above here. And then you actually have light here. You have a light area here. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'm going too fast. I forget you all are doing two eyes. Well, I'm doing one, so. How do we do the lights? Um, I just know it's there for now. And um, you don't actually draw the light areas, so you can kind of hint at them with the yellow because the lighter areas are going to be warmer colors and the darker areas are going to be cooler colors. So uh, as soon as you translate black and white to color, that's how you do it, is you make the lightest areas warm colors, the darkest areas cool colors. So just remember for now, this area is kind of light. There's a little bit of light there. Um, so you have under the eye, this area, 
And this area has a little bit of shadow. It's very subtle. So this is a very subtle shadow. Do not draw a dark shadow unless you're drawing the person as very sleep deprived. Um, so next, uh, so you have the water line here. And if you want to draw eyelashes, so this is, be careful not to make these cheesy. Like it's, it's very easy to make eyelashes cheesy. So usually I just kind of hint at them. So you can draw like a couple like this, or like you can draw a couple here, like, like a little bit here. Um, it depends on the scale of your drawing. So you would, if you're drawing a really small face, then you would just ignore these completely. If you're drawing a really big scale face, then maybe put in like a couple little eyelashes, but don't overdo it or it'll look really cartoony. So next we're going to sort of fake a shadow. So in art, you don't always fully follow what, um, what something looks like in real life. Um, sometimes you, so you look at the key identifying features in whatever you're drawing and you try to draw attention to them. So for example, in the eyes, even though the shadow is uniform over this whole thing, you would kind of create another sub shadow here. And it kind of curves down. Um, and you can also slightly shadow this part. So that's an example of something where it's not actually there, but you're showing it as if it is, and it just makes the art look better. And then this is again dark, but so you can't subtract the pencil. So even though this is going to be dark, you have to remember ahead of time not to fill this all in. You're going to leave a highlight here. Um, it's very important. So one of the reasons we plan things with this is because you can't really erase things. I mean, you can, but the paper will never be the same. It will never have that original white clean freshness. So with the eye, you leave this area white and that will have that sort of like sparkle in the eyes. And it's insane how much better your art will look because of that little sparkle. Um, yeah. Is it like for the other eye in the so interior the, or the exterior? So it would be so if the light is here, that's where the sparkle is, and for the other eye, it would be here. So it would be like so it's not a perfect flip. So really good question. Yeah, and um if you're drawing a really big portrait, then you can also show like the eye has kind of this kind of shape going on. So you can draw this sort of thing. And if, again, if you're going really big, you can add a very slight shadow here over the waterline. So this is an implied shadow. So it might not actually be there, but because this area is so white, the way you would go about an art, you're kind of, uh, accenting certain things and the way you accent things is say for example you're drawing a cube so let's say just purely objectively this side is this dark this side is like this dark and this side is light that's not how your brain sees it um i could go into all the neuroscience behind it but the way your brain sees it is this part is going to be really, really dark because your brain makes, and this part will be a little bit dark. And that's because your brain sees this contrast and is like, ah, that's the, that's the edge. This is important information. So, and likewise, this, this part of the cube will be slightly lighter than this side. And this applies to absolutely anything. And that's why in the eye, there is a slight shadow here, even though there isn't, it's because the, the light hits this line and you can never show it as bright enough unless you contrast it with a shadow over top. But again, this is a very, very subtle shadow. Do not draw like this shadow is really prominent. This shadow is very light. Okay, everyone happy with eyes? You can, you're all masters of eyes. Oh, and by the way, 
Shadow here, shadow here. Yeah. Uh, what was this? Shadow what? Shadow here, shadow here. And also, by the way, the reason there's a shadow here, and it's again a very light shadow, is actually to highlight the fact that we have these kind of wings on the nose. So those areas catch the light because they're raised up. And the only way you can show that is by putting a slight shadow here. But do not do a dark shadow or you will have a very tired looking person or a very old looking person. Either way, if you don't intend to do that, not what you should do. So everyone happy with eyes? All good? Okay, let's move on to the nose. Or I guess before I move on to the nose, I can draw the eyebrows just so we can do that. So eyebrows, of course, are super different. And the way you would figure that out, again, is you would use this technique and figure out what proportions, like how tall is it versus wide. Like if, if there's like a peak in the eyebrow, how far is the peak down the line? How tall is it? Um, you can compare width versus height. Um, so there is the eyebrow shape, something like this. And this side is darker, and then there's lighter along here. Uh, so you wouldn't draw individual hairs instead of drawing individual hairs, unless you're drawing like a really, really big artwork. If you're drawing a huge portrait, then you can draw individual hairs, but otherwise I do not advise it. It's kind of like, um, unless you're drawing a really big portrait. Um, so if you're drawing a mouth, this is hilarious. So if you're drawing a mouth and it's open, the way to make it look super, super creepy is to actually draw all the teeth. <laughs> so normally, you just either leave it completely white or you can leave a shadow under the top teeth, but never draw the teeth. Trust me, it will look terrible. <laughs> So there we go. Um, okay, so eyebrows. So as you can see, there's an overall shape that is made here, kind of like, kind of like this. So again, this was where this was where we have a very important shape here that shows that the nose goes in and then it goes out again. So this shape is really important, and this shape defines where the eyebrow starts. So this would be where the nose bends. So this part is really dark and around here is really light. So the darkest part is here and then it gets less dark here, but there's still a shadow. And the eye usually goes up a little bit here. So for some people like it curves down a little, like it can vary. It depends on the person and it depends how long the eyebrow is, but in general, that's the idea. Um, and there, you can also have a really dark shadow to eyebrow. So really, the point of shadows isn't just to have shadows, it's to sculpt what you're drawing. It's to show which parts are the deepest inside, which parts aren't. So that's the eyebrows. Do not draw the hairs, again. Um, given the scale, like even if you draw the face on the whole scale, probably you don't want to draw the hairs, if you do draw the hairs, it's only like a little bit, like just sparsely, just to imply that there's hair there. Okay, so next step. Um, let's draw the nose. So I already more or less covered the nose, but let's just review it. Uh, I guess I'll just draw the wings here. So we have the wings again. And this is kind of like um, no man's land between the nose and the cheeks. So if this is your nose, and this is, this is, again, you have this kind of shape. So then this part depends kind of on like different people have very differently shaped noses. So this is again where you kind of observe your subject and figure out what it is about their nose that makes it their nose. Um, but generally there's like a little bit of an indent here 
And that might affect your shadows, how you draw them. And generally there's like, here you can draw two triangles that don't quite meet. And that's your generic nose shape. So this, this implies, so about halfway through from here to here is roughly where the nostrils are. And you can kind of draw a shape inside here and that's where they live. So again, the overall nose shape is here. And so the there's a shadow here. There's a shadow here. And then um, depending on where the light source is, you either have really bright, so this can be really bright or from the other side, it would be uh, somewhat dark, not super dark. Can you show us this indent? Uh, this is, uh, oh, this one. Um, so it's very, very subtle. Um, and not everyone has it, but it's kind of just a marker, um, just so you know where you are in the nose. Um, and kind of like, yeah, so it's kind of like that. And like for some people, you would just indicate this with like a slight shadow here, for example. And this is more like prominent for people who have kind of like button noses. Um, so it, depending on the person, this might not be a prominent feature. You might not even really draw it at all. Um, if, if a person has a button nose, then there would be a slight shadow here because their nose protrudes um, here. Um, so again, your nostrils are in shadow. So you wouldn't just like fill in this whole thing. You would draw a deep shadow like right where the nostrils are, and then you would draw a lighter shadow under. So then you have this area overall is light, and then you have a little bit of darkness there, which basically highlights the fact that this part protrudes. And you have a little bit of darkness here. And then you have a really deep shadow under the nose. So there you go. And then, so this is the nose. Everyone happy with the nose? No, no. <laughs> oh, this part, yeah. So also there's this part. So this part, you would kind of do like a very, very light shadow just to highlight it. And also, so if this is your nose, uh, then the shadow kind of goes like this a little bit. So, kind of this. Um, everyone happy with noses? Oh, the other thing about noses. Um, so, there's a little bit of a shadow here on either side. And this is basically like so you never draw this crease unless you're drawing a really old person. Like, even if the person's smiling. Um, Drawing that line just makes them look really old. So this is one of those manipulations where you don't quite draw the real thing. Um, so all good with the nose? Shall we move on to the mouth? Okay. So overall, here's, here's that line that we drew here. And then, Roughly on average, the mouth is something like this and the lower lip. So notice that there's, it's a little bit flatter on the bottom and more curved on the sides. And then there's a little bit of an indent here and there's a little bit indent here. Again? Okay. <laughs> so, so you have a line, you have your original line in yellow here, and then you further sculpt the mouth. So you start out drawing the mouth basically like this, very lightly, when you're just drawing out the proportions. And then when you're drawing out the mouth like more exactly, then the top has kind of this shape, and it has this shape. Basically, you're drawing like a French fry. 
And then, <laughs> you know, when I try to look good, I don't know. They, they looked that way in Canada. <laughs> so um, then you have the bottom lip. And so depending on the person, things to look at it. Some people, their top lip is plumper. Some people, their bottom lip is plumper. It just depends. Some people have thinner lips. Some people have thicker lips. Uh, so that's one of the things that kind of defines how a person will look. Um, so there you have the overall shape. And also notice, I didn't join this line and this line and this line and this line. So in, that is a little bit more subtle on people's mouths. So there is a transition there, but generally you will like kind of show it like very roughly with the pencils. Um, so generally you will just kind of accent the fact that there's a shape there. And part of the reason you do that is because the top lip has a really deep shadow. So you can really like dig in and make that shadow really deep. And that also kind of shows that so one of the one area of light is so here is like a big area of light. Uh, here is a big area of light. Here is a big area of light around the cheek. Um, so we will go into more subtle shadows as we start drawing the face. But like here, for example, is really light shadow. And even though so you have shadow here, but you also have like a very subtle shadow here, like under where the cheeks are. Um, and it's very light, and here you have the actual like really light prominent part. So you're more just highlighting the fact that there's a highlight here, not so much accenting the fact that there's a shadow here. But of course, you can't add light, you can only add shadows. So that's why, again, you kind of trick your viewer by adding a very subtle shadow here. Um, so now the way we show the shape is um, we draw the shadows in. So this lip, very, very dark. It's basically just a black hole there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to use physics terms to be more relatable. Um, and then, um, so this also has a somewhat dark shadow to highlight um, the bottom lip. Here, you can remember to add a highlight similar to the eye. So if the light is coming from here, then you have um, the light here. Um, you can also add a very slight shadow here Oops. because um, for a lot of people, there's like kind of a divide in the lower lip. And you can add a slightly darker shadow on either side here to highlight the fact that there's this um, interesting shape going on here. And here there's a uh, very, very light. Never draw this dark because it will look kind of like, remember how I said never draw the teeth? This is kind of that situation where you never draw it on both sides. You only draw it on one side and you draw it very lightly. Um, and then of course there's a deep, deep shadow here under the lip. And you can use it to highlight where the chin is. Okay, and then often there's a shadow here. Okay, final step before we go to the watercolor paper. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to show on uh, everyone. Also, if you happen to be drawing on your watercolor paper, time, you can just take another one. It's just, um, there's and that's in more limited supply, so that's why there were no, like kind of sketch practice papers. Um, so before you start, it's really important to keep in mind where you're going to have areas of intense light because again, you can always add shadows, you can't really subtract the light. So, oh, and another thing I want to point out about that don't use black like the black pencil until literally the very, very, very end. Do not use black. 
Like you cannot make your drawing look like not subtle and not refined. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, so there's a light area here. There's a light area here. Everyone keeping up? Uh, let me know if you miss one of the lights. This side was once in a while just to point out uh, so oh, that we can see it. Sure, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, so light area here, light area here. You can do a little bit of light here, light here, light here. This is very important. Light here. Notice that I don't, I don't have a light area over the whole tip. Um, yeah, there was shadow under the lid. Yeah. Then a line, then light. So if this is your chin, then the shadow helps define where the chin is. So I would go. The sole purpose of shadow is to define where your shape is. Um, so notice the light is only on the top part of the chin. It doesn't descend all the way down. This part is slightly shadowed. Um, just as like the whole lower part of the face is very slightly shadowed, but this is a very subtle shadow. Okay. You didn't say lighted area. Does that mean like should we actually color it with a different color, or should we just not match it? It's either it's either yellow or white. Depending on the intensity. And another thing, so if you're drawing faces, you can add a little bit of orange. Orange is a really good blending color from like red or blue to like the yellow regions. Um, and it also just kind of makes it look like the person has rose in their cheeks or sort of like throughout their face. It just makes it look more alive. But we'll get into like adding colors that aren't like red or blue very soon. Um, there can also be a little bit of light like here. <laughs> and there's a bunch of light. So there's, there's kind of a, a crease here. So you see it more as people get older. There's a crease here. And basically, because your frontal frontalis here, and there's a bend in it. So if, if I draw a person from the side, like this is their forehead and then their, this would be their nose. There's a slight shadow here and there's, but really you don't show the shadow. It's more like you leave light here and you leave light here. Yeah. Okay. All make sense? Uh, so just like remember those things. And also for ears, if you're drawing a face head on, really all you need to do is draw like this and then add a bit of shadow here. And that's enough to kind of imply an ear shape. If you're fancy, you can add a little bit here, but that's all you really need. You don't need to draw anything complicated. And then for hair, you just kind of like, so usually near the ears, it's a little bit darker and it would be darker on this side since the light source is here. So the hair would be darker here and it's a little bit lighter there. So basically the darker parts would be more blue tinted. Um, yeah. So now we can get started on the watercolor paper. Uh, did anyone need a second sheet of paper? Did anyone already start using the watercolor paper? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, uh, if any of you have like a specific portrait you of like a specific person you have in mind, then you can like get a reference of them on your phone or whatever, and we can start going through this. <laughs> Guys, draw on the more textured side of the paper. And again, start with yellow and do not press down hard. So like the the pressure that you're starting with is like if you were tickling a newborn baby with a feather. I need some bread. Is it is it enough? Oh yeah. So you guys might need to share. 
É com isso que você vai começar, mano? So, for this portrait, um, uh, so one useful thing to do is figure out ahead of time before you start drawing anything. This is really important. Draw a line indicating the very top and the very bottom. And then you know that is your allowance. You cannot go past that. And draw a line from here to here. Figure out like where on the page your, your face is. And then you can start dividing like the halfway line. Make sure that line is actually halfway through. Actually a little bit lower if, because you have to add hair. So just remember that. So I guess maybe draw like two lines at the top, one for where the hair is, one where the skull is and the bottom. Yeah? I need a boat. So, you guys want to basically like uh, I can erase the chalkboard and basically go through this step by step again as you're doing it on the good copy. Or you guys can start following these steps and I can go around and answer questions and just kind of check on everyone. What do you want? So there's option A and option B in the order that I mentioned. So raise hands for option A. Okay, looks like option A. So I guess uh, I'm going to start erasing this. Just be like extra, extra light because again, this will, anything you draw with orange will show up. Like yellow basically will not show up. It's but And also try not to use the eraser because it will kind of mess up the paper. So don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lots of pressure. Uh, um, like and also another note, if you're using watercolor pencils, use a third of the pressure that the people who are, are using. So yeah, that's all Exactly one third. Exactly one third. <laughs> I think I think it was a little too close. She said. 
Okay. It's my person. It's a. No, no, no. 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 No, Okay, so with your yellow or orange, let's begin the overall sketch and make it so you like can barely, barely see it. Okay, so first we draw a circle. Or first, okay. you have your lines, right? You have your lines. This is the hairline. So this is where you do the top line, the bottom line. And then you drew a line here. Oops, sorry. And a line there, right? Okay. So this is this is your overall thing. Okay. So next we draw this. And remember you're going to add a little bit for later. So uh, a bunch of you ended with this. Oh. So what's the ratio between like the vertical and the horizontal um, limits? It varies a lot, so just what feels right to you. And if you're drawing a specific person from a reference, you can just literally measure it. So yeah, just it varies. So like this is very different from that, as you can tell. Okay. So it's just to get the overall shape right. And you're going to later add here, but we'll get to that later. So for now, I'm just drawing this kind of egg shape. And this is, so notice there's space here because we're going to add ears later. And here there's a space because we're going to add hair later. But for now, this is what you should have on your page. So now we're doing roughly, this is, this is halfway. This is your halfway mark from here to here. Um, so you have that, make sure it's actually halfway. This is the thing that a lot of you missed. Halfway, this is the eye line. And then halfway, this is the nose line. Make sure those two things are right. And then halfway between here and here, mouth line. Does somebody have a spear? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got that? Okay. So next we're doing eyebrow line, which is just like a little bit above where the eye line is. So this is one of the and you just kind of feel it out. So roughly there. Um, next we draw the eyes. So again, it's third, 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 half and half. So this is the full length, roughly. And you can play around with this until it is right. This is important. This is another thing a bunch of people miss. So make sure that it actually is half, third, 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 half. Unless you're drawing a specific person, in which case measure it out because that's one of those things that varies a lot. Okay, next. So I guess you can draw just like opals there to mark that this is where the eyes are. Okay, next step. So draw a line from here to the bottom of the face. And depending on the person you're drawing or whatever, um, this can be really narrow, a really narrow angle or really um, spread out angle. And note, even if you're drawing someone who's smiling, so the mouth would extend past here versus I'm drawing just a passport photo here. So this person isn't allowed to smile. Um, so the nose, the, the nostrils would still end at the same place. So you still need to draw this line here, the way I drew it. And then you can extend the mouse later if you're drawing them as they're smiling. So next, um, so you can draw however thick you want the lips to be. So for, for some people, the upper lip is thicker, for some people, the lower lip is thicker, just depends who you're drawing. 
Again, if you're drawing a specific person, measure this. Um, and again, the mouth ends here, the nostrils end here. So now that we have this line, the other thing we know is where we need to extend the cheeks from. So we extend the cheeks from here to here. And again, if you're drawing a female, then this would be um, like a little bit thinner. If you're drawing a guy, then this would be a little bit thicker. And like, you can vary the shape. So if it's like, like this kind of face, if it, uh, so just like, depends what kind of structure you want to give. Okay, so I'm just going to go with like this kind of shape. And typically you have a little bit, um, the biggest curve is a little bit uh, here, like it's a little bit higher, but again, this varies. And there might be a little bit of a dip here, but depends on which person you're drawing. Okay, everyone got that part? Okay, so uh, next we figure out the nose shape. So we draw this kind of shape, and that's the nose. And um, okay, so from this line, which is where the eyes are, you go outward, and this is an important area. And then you have the eyebrows, and the eyebrows again depends on who you're drawing, they can be different. Um, maybe it's a little bit thicker here. Okay, and then hairline is kind of dependent on person and just kind of where you feel yourself, uh, like this is arbitrary or where it might be. So I'm feeling like in this person, this seems like a good place for their hairline to stop. And the hairline can have different shapes, like often it has this kind of shape. Sometimes it can be a little bit smoother. It just depends. Often there's a little bit of a dip here in the hairline, right where the ears are. Um, so the ears, we go from the eyebrows, the nose. And the shape kind of depends on who you're drawing. So it can be like this, it can be like, it can be basically a variety of shapes. So just like, it depends who you're drawing. Okay, next we're going to draw the cheekbones. So kind of just generically, the dip is near where the nose ends. And then you have the chin a little bit below the mouth and it's fairly close. So. If I had to do an average guesstimate, I would say maybe a third and two thirds. But this depends on the person. Is it wrong? Uh, I'll read this a bit. Uh, so this would be a third and this would be two thirds. But this is again a variation. So this depends on the person. Um, also note that here, the, the forehead is most prominent and it can dip in a little bit. Some people also have a little bit of a dip here. So then this part would be a little bit shadowed. So remember that for later, but these parts are all very bright around it. And this, uh, some people have it, some people don't. So just, again, depends on who you're drawing. Okay, now let's define the eyes a bit more. So, you have kind of like the eye socket is here. And then you have 
the wings of the nose. And everyone keeping up i'm not too fast okay just shout at me if i'm too fast otherwise i'll just assume i'm going at a good speed no, i mean it's fast but at this point i think everything would be fast so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so next so here's my mouth i'm going to make this person smile a little bit so I'm going to add these two little creases here. So here you will later have shadow. Um, don't draw the shadow in with yellow though, because um, so first of all, it will make the blue less prominent. And the, the more layers you add, the harder it is to add over top of them, unless you're using watercolor pencils. So um, with the yellow, basically just do like the lines overall. Don't do the shadow, especially since the yellow is reserved for the brightest parts of the face. You want to cover the mouth there? Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to get into these areas. Okay, so the eyes. First, you draw an almond shape. Um, and this depends on who you're drawing, this shape will differ. So yeah, and then um, the eyelid again will hugely differ. So just depending on who you're drawing, draw it however you need to. Um, okay, so uh, next we draw the mouth. So remember there's this french fry shape and you're accenting just this part. So don't accent it now. Just like draw a yellow line here and don't connect it here. You don't connect because that's the more subtle transition. And for the ears, you draw lines like this. So I hope everyone's drawing really lightly. Just a reminder, draw very, very, very lightly with the yellow, just so it's very, barely visible. <laughs> um, and then so draw the irises and the pupils of the yellow and just remember so you can even with the yellow mark out spots that are like no i am not going to touch these spots these are like these are very important regions that will never feel the pencil. So here's one, here's one. You can have one here. Yeah, so uh, if you decide to have the light source from somewhere else, feel free to extrapolate it differently. But I'm just, again, assuming the light is from here. And so you all know how to do it. So if the light is from here, then obviously the shadows would be kind of opposite. Um, so, so yeah, um, I'm just going to assume that the light source is still there. So light here, light here, light here, light here. There's light here, there's light here. There's a little bit of light here. There's light here. Oh, sorry. Okay. So. These in a different color. Yeah. Oh, no. That's a good idea. Okay. I'm going to trace over the light areas with red, okay? Yeah, still yellow and still very lightly. This is just kind of a reminder for yourself. So again, it's the same as all the other. Limited, do not have to be. Yeah, do not shade them. At the end, potentially you might shade them very slightly with yellow and a little bit of orange maybe, but for now, just do not, do not touch them. So these are like the untouchable regions. It's a bit more. There's a lot of white, it's hard. Can you? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, potentially here a little bit. 
So here, the light region, by the way, you can use this as a, a tool in order to show the shape of the nose. So if the person has, so it's like the nose goes like this a little bit for the overall thing, you can have this light area would be like here, and you can have a slight shadow here. And that shows the shape of the nose. So this would be dark, and then you see what the shape of the nose is. So use the lights to your advantage. Um, you might have a little bit here, a little bit here, here, maybe a bit here, maybe a bit here. Notice that this white area is bigger than this white area because the light is coming from here. So out of the nose would be here. Um, you have a little bit of a light region here. So again, remember, oh, I guess I write the cube. Remember the cube. So here we're going to have an intense shadow. So you have the light, which further makes that shadow more prominent. You're basically trying to add as much contrast to the face as you can, while still keeping it very subtle. And you have light here, and you can have a little highlight here on the lip. Um, am I missing anything? I don't think so. I think that's basically all the untouchable regions. So you all got that down? Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next stage. Shadows. You change color. Yes. So change color. Um, select a blue color. And now you're going to be again very, very, very light. Like the lightest touch you can possibly have. Especially those of you with watercolor pencils, you're going to need to be like crazy light. Okay. So, can I ask somebody to do that? And then using your finger. No, don't use your finger. So, guys, don't use your finger because, um, so this watercolor paper, because it's watercolor paper, you, um, if you touch it with your finger, it'll absorb the oils really well and it will make it so you can't draw over top. So it's not like with, um, so you might smudge a little bit with like regular pencils. Do not do that with watercolor paper and colored pencils. First of all, they don't smudge very well. Like they will not smudge nearly as well as like regular pencils. So yeah, don't touch your paper. Um, okay, so. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the darkest shadows so that you can practice your light touch so that by the time you get to the light shadows you're able to go even lighter how about that um okay so if my light source is from here then the darkest shadows that i see are so first of all like here here Here, upper lip, here, here, um, under the upper eyelid. Okay, and um, here, and Okay, so you got your your darkest shadows down. Um, we'll get to the slightly lighter shadows later because um, so we're going to we're going to draw them in later, but uh, there needs to be a certain level of prioritization uh, in different layers because the more layers of color you apply, the harder it is to add color over top. So we're going to start off with just that. Um, maybe actually add a little bit of shadow here. Like, uh, remember this light spot in the eye. So around the eye. And also, yeah, I see a lot of you are doing this already, but use the side of your pencil to kind of like, uh, like this, like with a broader stroke. Like. To, to draw these shadows. 
Uh, you want it to be as smooth as possible, so you don't want to see like kind of gaps in your pencil now that we're doing shadows. And also, um, if at all possible, remember, don't do lines like this, do lines like this. Okay. Next. Do the last thing. Hmm? Lines like what? Lines like I'll draw it here. So try whenever possible to avoid drawing lines like this. Draw them like this, and not like this. For also, like it's very tempting. Um, it's always better to draw a straight line, just like. Um, mm -hmm. Continuous line. Uh, okay. Next stage. So um, we're going to very, very lightly. Where's my Okay, I guess I'm going to pretend that. Um, Orange. Oh, you found a wrench. Thank you. Okay, so avoiding the very lightest areas again. So we're going to roughly so ignoring ignoring the the shapes and everything. We're just roughly going to mark regions. As remember, I said the top is more yellow, the middle is more red, the bottom is more blue. So. The yellow region, again, avoiding these bits, the yellow region is going to be, so this is where it ends, uh, going to be just basically lightly make an overall hue like this. So you want this hue yellow and do this? Yes, yellow. Sorry, the, the blue part here is dark. Mm -hmm. you have a shape. Yes, but you're ignoring the yeah, So it's just basically a marker, but it's going to be uh, very, very subtle. So right now we're ignoring the really subtle shadows. Can you repeat again? We use yellow to do what? So you use yellow to uh, I'll, I'll show the borders. This whole region. Oh, I guess also here. You fill in this whole region very lightly with yellow. Except for the forbidden zones. Except for the forbidden zones. Let me know when you're done because this will take a while to do nicely. Like make sure it's very even and very light. So maybe you just wave your hand at me when you're done so I can roughly guess to me. Okay, roughly, is everyone caught up with that part? Okay. Next, we have the red zone. So again, we're avoiding the forbidden regions and we're going to go super crazy light. So basically, uh, actually avoid the, avoid the eyes. So, so, oh, I guess this red isn't very visible. So, okay, oops. This, uh, this. But we're now going over some. Oh, sorry. Yes. Except for the forbidden regions. Uh, so, roughly, roughly. So the upper part of the nose, not fully into the nose, just the upper part of the nose from like basically like halfway up uh, through the bulbous part of the nose up 
this part and basically you're highlighting where the cheekbones are so again the cheekbones are like roughly they end where the nostrils end so like roughly this region is red and also like some parts of the eyes will have a little bit of a red tint but we won't get to that yet okay so we have this very light yellow or red red region and if you don't have red, then I guess do this with orange, um, unless you use the orange for the yellow. <laughs> uh, then I guess just wait for the red. Oh, and also another thing is. Um, if, if you're waiting on the yellow, you can also just um, add blue, like a blue shadow also to the, uh, the hair on the sides where the shadows would be. Everyone caught up with that? No, okay. I guess if you're waiting on a pencil color, then the remaining bit, do very, very lightly with blue. And remember, you're doing it even lighter than this shadow. Like you're doing a very, very light blue. And again, avoid the forbidden zones. Oh, and also the ear. There is red over the ears. I forgot to mention. How will all of this change for darker skin colors? Or um, this applies to for any skin color. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, what we're doing, literally any skin color, you would start the same way. And then over top later, the way you change the skin color is you use like different shades. So for like white skin, you would use orange. For darker skin, you would use a combination of orange and brown. So yeah. Because this is just basically showing how light hits the skin. We aren't, this, none of this is actual skin color. Um, this is just like, so generally you have more red in the cheeks. This applies to anyone because that's where blood goes. And so it looks red. Um, this part is generally more in shadow. So it's more blue and this is generally lighter. So it's more yellow. So that's just the way it goes and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Everyone caught up to this? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, um, I guess uh, we can uh, we can do the um, more subtle shadows. So more sh subtle shadows are things like, so we had shadows here, and now you can add a little bit more blue shadow. So all the shadows are blue. So very, very, very lightly add blue to these regions. Let me know when you're done with the eye region, we'll move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Brown like that, it's 
We've not done like this. So this is the yeah we haven't done the details. We just uh, drew like so this this shadow is much darker than this one. But uh, this is a shadow, and here there's like a little bit of a shadow. Also, this shadow is a little bit darker closer to here because the light is here, so this part is lighter and this part's darker. It's not as much of a difference here. So on this side, if, if the light is from here, then this part would be lighter. And the way you would accent that is by making this part darker. Okay, now on to another subtle shadow right next to the nostrils. And so all of the bottom part of the nose. So now we're doing, now we're doing this shadow. Also. And it's very light. And this shadow, again, very light. And if you're doing a, if you're doing a nose that has like a button nose, then you would do a shadow here. Uh, and also very subtly, you can now do this shadow. And again, if your nose has a shape, then the shadow would follow that shape. It's a good time for you to move yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, I'll die. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to come around and just check how dark everyone's drawing to make sure it's not too dark. <laughs> Uh, a little bit too dark, but uh, it's okay. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Perfect, John. It's absolutely perfect. You have to own your, your own thing. <laughs> if you want to, to swap to look better, you have to swap with her. Yes, thank you. That's why I was really big because then you can make more mistakes and you don't see it. Even it ends. Yeah. 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 This shadow, which is more subtle than this shadow. And you can add this shadow depending on how prominent it is for the person you're drawing. And there's a deep shadow here, which I think we've already drawn. And you can add slight shadows on either side of the mouth. The subtle shadow is on top of the lip or uh, <laughs> where it goes off a bit what was the last comment 
um, subtle shadow here. Like, ah, at the chin. Oh, okay. Like the, uh, no, this isn't the under the lips. This is like the bottom. It's like, okay, so if, if these are the lips, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like here, you are talking about like the very subtle shadow, and then here would be a darker shadow under. Okay, okay. Okay, so next, let's do the eyes. Um, so We've already drawn this shadow. We can draw a subtle shadow here. And remember this light spot. This spot is like very important. Um, and uh, the pupil, just very lightly, you can color in blue. But um, so most of the pupil will be blue even to the end. But at the end, we're going to add black accents to it to make it really pop out. Um, so for now, just very light blue and also very light blue here. And also you can add a very, very light blue here above the waterline. And you can also add a very subtle shadow here. Uh, here. Everyone caught up to that point? Okay, uh, now you get to choose the person's skin color. So if it's um, uh, either an Asian or a white person, then you can have like orange basically, just very, very lightly go over everything except for the forbidden zones. Very, very, very lightly, super lightly, you're just hinting it. If it's a darker skin person, then you can use a combination of brown and orange. So you would use brown over the darker areas and orange in the slightly lighter areas. And forbidden zones? Sorry. And forbidden zones? Oh, yeah. No forbidden zones for anyone. You go everywhere when there's blue, red, green. Yeah. Okay. So we don't touch the forbidden zone? Okay. Don't touch them. Never, ever. We will eventually, but that's like. The, the last thing we do. So I don't get what we're drawing now. The, the yellow part. Uh, so you're drawing over everything except for the forbidden zones. Okay. Yeah. And really take the time to do this very subtly. The eyes should be done up until that point before uh, doing the, the coloring of it. Uh, yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Better do it fast. That's like the perfect level of light. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Excellent. Is everyone ready? Next one. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. It's going to get darker over time. It's like <laughs> Actually, maybe we can pull this up because it's okay. Guys, this is an example. This is how light it needs to be. Oh, oh so we can see it now. <laughs> this is the lightness level. <laughs> Showing the light. It's a visual solution. Just the light. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ready for the next step? Okay, next we're going to take the red and we're going to do a light layer over the lips except for the forbidden zone. And you can go slightly darker over the dark area of the lips with red. Again, what's forbidden zone? It's the lip. So just the lip area. So you are you're going over the entire the entire lips area except for the forbidden zone. You're going over the whole thing, but you can go a little bit darker here because it's harder to see over the blue. So a uh, brown eyes, blue eyes, darker eyes, whatever, whatever color you want, just like very lightly color the iris. Did you do this? The sticks? Oh, the stick that you want. It's too light to know where my problems are. Next, um, we're going to whatever color you want the hair, except for black. If it's black hair, then do a combination of brown and blue. Um, I guess use brown for now since we just added blue, but later we can add more blue to the hair. Um, so color in the hair very lightly. Again, we're doing it very lightly. And you can also do the eyebrows. And I don't know if any of you are drawing um, uh, the faces with like long hair or anything. If you are, then think of it as like a shape. And again, like think of where the shadow is. So like if if the hair goes like this, then like there would be shadow here. So then this would be like darker blue. There would be a shadow here from like and under the ear. So then this would be the lightest region. You don't know, just kind of think of think of where the shadows fall. Everyone 
everyone ready? Caught up to this? Um, okay. Who's excited to use green now? Yay! Okay. There was some excitement. Uh, okay. So one one tip that is surprisingly effective at making things look lifelike is to have slightly different lighting on one side of the face versus another. So one color that is good is green. So you can have like one side of the face, the side closer to the light can be slightly more orange and the other side can be slightly more green. But you don't apply this everywhere. So basically um, where the shapes change. So like I would apply green like along the edge kind of and going along the shape. So like here I would follow the cheek a little bit and then go down. And here I would kind of follow the hairline. So it doesn't quite go over the whole blue shadow. That's not the point. It's kind of like the the contours of the shadow. And like here you could add a little bit of green. Um, you could add a little bit of green there. <laughs> okay, let's do yeah. Can everyone see where the green zones are? Okay. And on the other side of the face, likewise, we have the orange zones. So again, just kind of along the contour regions. Oh, I guess uh, I forgot to add green here. So yeah, and like a little bit. So here there's orange. Could you repeat the source of the lighting for the green? Uh, so it's opposite from, so this is where the light is. And the green is from here. So it's kind of like, it's not quite where the shadows are. It's kind of like accenting. So like the side of the face, uh, it's kind of like tricking your audience. Okay, everyone done with that? No. Oh, and I guess the hair, if you're doing that, would also. Sorry, can you review the green? Uh, the green, so it's like, um, here, I'll highlight it. So basically, see where the blue is, it's like here. For example, and the green is more like here. So it's at like, it's basically like highlighting the fact that this ends here. So it's not quite the same as a shadow. It's more of like an accent. Okay, everyone caught up yet or yeah. okay. um, now we're adding a little bit of so this is where it starts to really come to life. So we're going to add a little bit of red, say to the cheeks. This is where like where you would see red in the face, you like really sort of highlight it. So like this is a prominent spot. Um, you might see a little bit of red 
on the nose, on the ears. The ears are typically red. Oh. Um, so I was going along uh, near where the shadows are. So not over the forbidden zones yet. Um, so you have it along the nose, along the cheeks, um, ears, a little bit are, uh, near the eyes, like the eyelids are a little bit redder. Um, a tiny bit under the eyes. So again, this is very subtle and light layer. Oh, and also I forgot to say way back, but this should be very slightly blue if if you want to accent the crease to you. If you don't, then ignore that part. Okay, so and so you see where the red is, right? Um, so near the red, so near the forbidden zones, we're going to add a little bit of orange, sort of. So so if if this is the forbidden zone, then some of the red areas are kind of like so some of the red is like say here kind of blend the orange in like kind of here around the forbidden zones and like yeah orange very subtle and uh, okay I guess I don't have a yellow but then once you have the orange, you can use yellow to step even a little bit further. And this is actually in the forbidden zone, a little bit inward. And notice I'm darkest like near the red and it's more subtle away from the red. How's everyone doing uh, with, uh, have you more or less done this to all the, all the forbidden zones, like this kind of pattern? Hard to blend in this texture. Sometimes. Yeah, that's you basically blend by doing things very lightly, and then after a well, like, from, so from here on, we're going to start darkening it and actually making it darker. But now we have like the foundation so that it will actually look realistic. So once you're done with this stage. Then we're kind of repeating the last couple steps all over again. 
So we're, we're whatever skin color you're doing. So if you're doing a lighter skin or a darker skin, so remember the lighter skin is more orange and the darker skin is like kind of brown and orange. Um, so uh, what either of those, whichever one of those you're doing, um, you can do that layer again. Like again, very lightly do that. Yeah, overall, except for the forbidden zones. And once you're once you're done with that stage, then um, go over the um, the shadowy bits with a layer of blue. So again, remember the shadows we did in blue, do a very thin layer of that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is everyone coming up there? Did everyone also do the blue shadows? No, no. Okay, I'll go around. Uh, if anyone has questions, stop me. I'm just kind of going around and it's looking really good. Lighter here or not lighter, but more 
like another layer and then you did the blue and then you can now very likely go with red over like uh, the so okay if if this is the blue zone then you can remember how we did this so if this is the blue zone then you can go very lightly with red here Okay, this is like a Tipo, se tivesse bom, está de aparecendo para mim. Yes, nice. Okay, and once once you're done with that, like any of the any of the forbidden zones that are not in places that are like really bright white. So figure out which places you want to be really bright white, like the points of the eyes. Do you have a question? Okay. Um, and basically color everything with a very light tint of yellow. Like including the purpose. I don't know. I'm just too greedy. Oh, because of everything. Yeah, except for like things like the sparkles in the eyes. Anything you want to be bright white, leave. Everything else, very, very light yellow. Yes. And everything else. And everything else. Yes. And then once you're done with the yellow, then you can do another layer of skin tone. So again, either just orange or orange and brown. Oh, not, not there. Oh, yeah. So, guys, maybe not the white of the eye. You can add a little bit of yellow there, but like just barely. Or leave it white. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, guys, so now you can go even in the forbidden zones I'll very slightly with the orange. But okay, actually, wait, before you do that, so leave like a very little amount in the forbidden zone somewhere in the center, but like a little bit closer to the light source that's still yellow. 
and um, but you can like do a little bit of orange closer into the forbidden zone. Or just a recap. I mean, it was uh, it was red uh, to to the to the side of the of the blue, and yeah. then and then it was uh, a layer of orange or orange and brown, and then it was yellow everywhere, and then yeah, except for the bright zone, and then a bit of orange in the bright. <laughs> And then orange everywhere, including forbidden zones, except for like the very middle of forbidden zones. Okay. Why are you laughing? The next stage is really exciting, by the way. We're starting to like actually do the details now and get darker. <laughs> hey, everyone, ready? Um, okay, so the next stage, this is a little bit hard to show on here because the chalk can't draw very dark. Um, but at this point, you can start um, sort of um, showing the more prominent features. So as an example, you can um, add like kind of a darker brown to the nostrils. So again, remember the nostrils are darker here where they start and then they're a bit lighter down. So things like that, you can color the bottom of the eyebrows a little with um, the color they are a little bit darker. Um, you can do uh, like a, a line for the eyelashes. Um, you can color in the hair some more and start to add details. So like if the hair goes like this, for example, then you would start to add more shadows. So now it's kind of like the phase where you start to accentuate the features. And this is easier to do with the watercolor pencils if you have access to them. And again, still don't press very hard, but at this point you can press about as hard as you want, as long as you don't like press down on the paper enough to like indent it. So you're doing like the, you're like kind of highlighting the really dark stone. So like on the underside of the eyebrows, like the eyelashes line, like underside of the nostrils, things like that, basically. <laughs> It's easy. I know it's looking better than eyes, but like so super faint, you don't can see that. Another Okay. Yeah, so this stage will start to help build that up. And then after you can add more layers, and that will make it even darker, but first you need to add those. Really good. <laughs> 
And we have this very good for everything except for the middle of the orange everywhere except for the very middle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. where it should start to look less dark overall uh, or less light overall because as soon as you start highlighting the features it'll kind of start to pop out and everything else should look less dark and then once you're done with uh highlighting the features then you can add more layers uh, kind of as you see fit of um like uh, various people use different degrees of like the different colors that we layered on top of each other. So kind of just feel around for it. Like if you feel like you need more blue, if you feel like you need more orange, etc. cetera, um, you can add more layers of the skin tone colors. Um, but uh, really you have the basis at this point as soon as you get the details in a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> uh, so just the upper edge of the And then the, the next stage um, after after you after you do the the details and then you add layers of the other colors as you see fit. So it just kind of depends on which drawing in this room I'm looking at, it would be different things. Um, then you can like the very final details, you can add like the so for example the pupil. So if this is the pupil, you would add, oops, sorry, uh, dark like here, mm -hmm. and you would add dark around the sparkle of the eye. You can add um, like uh, add darkness to this this line between the lips. Um, add darkness here, um, and yeah, you can start to use black a little bit you can use blue again to really highlight the the darkest bits um you can start making the hair darker all of those things and then the eyelashes you can do the eyelashes a bit darker so I guess at this point I'm just going to kind of walk around and if if you guys want to see this one is kind of like individual depending on the drawing and what stage you're at. Yeah. We've been drawing a long time. Yeah. Have you ever been to Basque New Year for a long time? Have you ever been to Basque New Year for a long Just my friends are artists or the. Yeah. Another one that's a little bit like you. Yeah. Because I want the person on my heart to go. Someone feels a bit like you. I kind of miss this. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, really good. Just um, uh, so you're at the stage where you can start being more aggressive with details like the eyelashes, the eyebrows, the things of the no pop. Basically, whatever color is appropriate. So, like maybe brown or like, yeah, just kind of depends on the color of the features and like another thing you can do is so say the lips you can the borders for example you can be a bit darker near the border as opposed to you have a darkest like in the middle but i would do a dark Another thing that is um, uh, 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 draw the the shape of the face. Yeah. Oh. Yes, if he gets a face, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. 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 Oh, indeed. I think I was a bit too hard. Just don't be too hard on yourself as well. Mainly this part. Yeah. Yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. She already is doing it. <laughs> I don't know what can I do to save it a bit because I think, I mean, I think anyone knows something really strange about this drawing. Like, what is missing? Yeah. Uh, this one is this one I like very much. But you would be the one that would be what totally missing in the bitterness. <laughs> <laughs> there is something very important that I can touch and draw. Yes. It's obvious. It's super obvious. Guys, if, um, so if you drew too darkly over a zone and you want to lighten it up, you can add yellow and that kind of applies light. Mm. Yellow. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. You know, we would draw. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is missing? Come on. Okay, so yellow everywhere. Yes. Yeah. No, there are no, there no, no lines. lines. Yes. I, I, I did do the lines of the arms. Oh, nice. What? What? No, I don't know. I don't and I can't identify faces. They are messing up with you. They are. I mean, now it's just injured. Yeah, yeah. Looks like someone is as a hammer. It's metamorphosis. It's just a little bit high, right? Metamorphosis. So I was inspired by metamorphosis. Yeah. So, and also if you, you are not getting the reference, and he doesn't even have a, an eyebrow. Oh, he looks like a like a black suit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is indeed actually because I was super using the try don't draw. I I'm not into the <laughs> <laughs> look at this. I 
Ah, but come on, he's angry about the, the... No, mine is Sabotage. Yeah, he is Sabotage. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Not at the start. Let's open the door and spend some minutes with the to add things like the eyebrows and brown and things like that. Um, so once you highlight the features, it will really tone down the intensity of the other colors. And if it's still too saturated after that, then just add another layer of skin tone color. Also, guys, another thing you can sort of accent at this point is um, the shape of the face. So, um, and I, I want to make a note about that. So the shape is kind of more prominent here, more prominent here, and then you don't really highlight it much here. So you can draw a very faint line, but really you want it like accented in those areas. Uh, with like brown probably. Brown or blue or a combination of the two. So at this point you're at the stage where it's kind of more artistic license. Like you kind of cross the boundary of like where everyone's even a flow. No, ele só é mesmo, não tá igual o maluco da Pedro. Não, o maluco da Pedro. Não, o maluco Ele só é vaso, Ele só é vaso.
So the way to make it look less so is first of all to add a bit more blue to the bottom, a bit more yellow to the top, and to accent the accent. Like uh, so the eyebrows darker, hair if you want to add it, nostrils darker, like all of those things. Yeah. Because yeah, basically as soon as you add it, um, all the like it's much better kind of fades and becomes much more subtle. That's why it, it was important. She looks like a thank you. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm super yeah, happy to see but no, no. Super nice. Lectures as well. Yeah. We're excited about the end of the lab too. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Yeah, I want to make a hair. Okay. Yeah. I like your nose. Very nice. Yeah, this one I like. It's really nice. Like it looks like cut it out. I mean, mirror is like it's like it's the food, which is like in a very in a stupid, very, yeah, in a very childish way. Yeah. I would say childish. Yeah. yeah. This is why I mean, mirror is just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Childish ways. Yeah. In French, I don't know it's Spanish. They say the same. Word. Not a mimi, but mimi. I would use But don't be afraid to make it. all the colors on the now. It's sweet. It's gonna stay sweet. 
No, 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 no. But I know uh, why. Why? Is I just we ask super important question. Super important. Super. Why is it? I mean, it's it's cute, but why is it? Why? Never mind. Do we? Yeah, let's just put it Oh, nice. Uh, Ontario. Yeah. Uh, like the, uh, the uh, signal. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I say an acronym. Acron. Yeah, that's the. Okay, this paper is actually nice. Uh, this is called a pencil. No, you don't have the chance to make this step. I was cheating. I don't want to pen a front face. Yes, I just wrote an ID degree. It's easier for me. Honestly, I think my, my pencil drawings are much better. Yes, yes, yes. yes.